come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show, the movie and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by mm. going over and hitting that like or subscribe button. Mm. These are the Internet Radio Superstar. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight, we have a special episode. You we were do. expecting backdraft. Yeah. Weren't we all? But um, we had an experience this week that demanded I think so. talked about. I think Felt so. Felt like it. So, so we went on a freak show field trip. <laughs> freak show field trip after the fact. Yep. Well, well, we all talked about going. We did. And we all were watching it at the same time. Yes. Basically, even though not yes. necessarily the same place. So it yep. was like a parallel movie viewing experience. We saw in a violent nature. There you go. From the year. 2024. Holy shit. I literally days yes, ago. Literally. Like, it may be, aside from maybe like a Chucky movie that came out on like direct-to-video, this may be the closest one to release that yeah. we've like seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. It's pretty close, yeah. Yeah, and this is an IFC and Shudder movie. Yeah. Um, we are going to spoil it. Yeah. So you should just know that right now. Yeah. Um, because we... You kind of have to to talk about this movie, I think. Um, you do indeed, and even though we will spoil it, I don't think it'll spoil it. If you know what I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I don't. Uh, if you're I familiar you... with uh, slasher movies in general, there's but not specifically, much to spoil. yeah, yeah, the Friday not... the Thirteenth. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all. Uh, the th yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not much to spoil well, there. I mean, people, we, people die. We people die in the woods. Yeah, and it's a it's a new movie, and it's uh, in our wheelhouse, and it's kind of a significant, uh, I guess, event. Right? It mm -hmm. seems like... Uh, it does. Feels like it. Also because it's like a low-budget movie that seems to, you know, uh, it's a, got a theatrical release. and you know. We know. So, <laughs> you guys know that meme, that Dr. Manhattan meme that's like, it's the year 1984 and I'm doing this. It's the, it's year, the year 1984 yeah, and I'm, Ghostbusters is in theaters. Yes, yeah, that I'm one. I'm buying this. And so, it's like, it's the year 2024, <laughs> Ghostbusters is in theaters. When I was... In, <laughs> yes, exactly. When that meme, when I was in the theater, I just kept going, oh, it's 2024 and I'm watching a new slasher movie. Oh. It's 2024 and I'm watching a new slasher it's 2024 movie. I was so and I'm excited. watching a new Friday the 13th movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, so for the folks at home Gus Van Zandt's Friday the 13th. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which, if they <laughs> had Terrence just called Malick. it that, oh, yeah. I almost would have got to the theater faster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this then. I guess the thing that we have to... So if you... <sighs> Do you have to know the Friday the 13th film franchise in order to fully appreciate this movie? You have to know slasher tropes and stereotypes. I think that... Which mostly come from Friday the 13th. I was going to say, something. yeah. Very yeah. specific, it's, too, but I could be... It I mean, feels very specific to Friday the 13th. That it is commenting on, but I, but I don't think you need to know all the lore no, of the Friday no, Thirteenth no. series. You just need to know the gist of Friday. It, and it yeah. helps, yeah. I think, because some of the the Kane um, Hodder movies, if yeah. nothing else, yeah. like yeah. Those yeah. specifically. Yeah. But I mean, it had like there were moments. I guess that you know, I guess it's been called an ambient movie. I saw that and I rolled my eyes so fucking mm. hard. We there, had elevated horror, ambient horror, oh, a the, total movie. The Wikipedia yes. called it. It said it's been called an ambient slasher. I was like, by who? By Chris Nash himself? Like yep, who's calling did. it? Are an you ambient sure they didn't slasher? mean ambient slasher? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I know. But, but I guess but, knowing the Friday Thirteenth movies, I was filling in like during the ambient ambient stretches of the movie yes thinking back over a catalog of friday mm -hmm. the 13th movies right and filling you start in thinking in what those yeah. characters are yeah. doing in those moments yes yeah. so, but that's what i'm saying it's like so so that experience that i had with it i don't know if you know you could say like the average film goer would have this is the first thing i said to michaela when we came out of watching this because we saw in the same theater uh i, I went up to her and i was just like i think i've seen too many horror movies yeah uh, and well, and so my friend that was with us, Peter, is just as well versed in horror movies. And we like I could tell the people in the audience who it was for and who it wasn't. But I also but at the same time, I feel like it's for me, but it wasn't. If yeah. that makes sense. But you and I and the people I were with were laughing at certain points and this no one else was laughing. Oh, no, this is a comedy. This, yeah. Or but, at least I, it, it, I found it more funny than it because it definitely wasn't scary. No. And, no. I'm, and I'm wondering who it was scary for if. I've read those reviews. I've read people who said uh, it was disquieting. Okay. It's eerie. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I guess because they, it, it's the idea that you're put in the perspective of a killer, a mm-hmm. brutal killer, kind of. I mean, I say that, but even the movie hedges that. It does. Right? Yeah. It does not make you empathize with a killer. No. no. It just kind of puts you like in following the, in along. the video game position of yeah. being a killer. Yeah. That roaming camera behind the shoulder. But, but they've said that it's eerie. It's not like a jump scare kind of thing. It's disquieting, no. I guess, in like what he does. But I think I took it as a as a comedy. I mean, yeah. there's so much of it that seems like, I guess it's, you know, I would describe it as like, a, a, it's a deadpan. Mm-hmm comedy right where mm-hmm. like the filmmakers Focus aren't the even dead. yeah they're not even admitting to you that this is supposed to be funny it's one of those it's yep. like some some movies a black comedy is like this is funny and i'm laughing mm-hmm. at it when i'm like should i be this is like we're not even going to tell you this is funny. Mm-hmm. This We're just going to do it. <laughs> and there will be no score in this entire movie to tell you how to feel about anything. No yeah. stings. No, there's no score. Nothing. And I understand that choice because I understand this movie is zigging when I'm expecting it to zag and that's its thing. But I think some of it is at the detriment to your enjoyment of the movie. Really? I, I, I think for me personally, yes. I get, I think I understand what you're saying yeah. because there are scenes that would usually be accompanied by uh, some kind of ring, 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 yeah. you know, some right. that There's are, no tension in or, this movie. Well, and, uh, but I, I kind of, that's I what I'm trying like to figure the, out the no for us thing. or for the general yeah, well, are we the problem here? I, yeah. I'm starting to. Th- I think we are. Yeah. When it comes to this movie, I think we are the problem. Well, I heard the advance word on it was that it was super gory and there were people throwing up yep. at it. Oh, jeez. I've seen too many horror movies. I was going to say, maybe right. for one, but the rest, yeah, again, yeah we've seen I, I could think of one, maybe two scenes that way, but they're so far apart and there's so much dull stuff in between that it kind of dulls the impact of those scenes okay I so feel. i'm getting the imp- impression it, yeah, that doesn't. you didn't uh care for it all I, that much i understand what this movie is trying to do and i respect what it's trying to do but i didn't find it to be the most entertaining movie okay. i was kind of bored by what it was trying especially in the third act i'm really losing patience okay with this well the movie. third act yeah. i'll agree yeah uh, that's where but i guess i wasn't bored up until like i don't know the ambient thing too much I think I, I, was, I think I was, I was filling in. I was I was using you know my own mind was engaged, you know, like separate from the movie. And mm-hmm. I don't know if that's part of the planned experience that yeah. the director right. intends, or if that was a byproduct. You right. know, because I, I'm coming into it as like I mean I've seen the Friday the Thirteenth movies like hundreds mm-hmm. of times yeah. and know them back to the front. <laughs> you know, so I mean, like the movie, it just kind of discards the traditional plot because yeah. it gives you voiceover um, elements that you're like, oh, that's when this part of the movie is happening. And so it doesn't even have to show you it. You just know like, oh, this is when they know there's somebody, you know, out there right. in the woods. And those are interesting parts because I like when that those bits kind of just float over to you. The dialogue, when it's not going directly into the characters or uh, sitting with the characters in this the way it just kind of floats as he walks by a certain scene and you get bits and pieces of it and you got to try and figure it out. I wasn't, I, I didn't think it was dull just because I was trying to figure out, all right, I was doing what Colin was doing was just kind of thinking of the other movies, but also like, all right, what are they going to do next? I mean, which is, I guess the point of any movie to keep you, you know, interested. Like, you got to admit right. like 40% of this movie is walking. It yeah. is. Like it is a lot of just silent walks right. through and, the woods. Right. And I got the point where I, I earlier on, I felt like they were doing it well, maybe they weren't. It felt like it should have shortened up how much time we spent walking with them as the movie it went on. Because we get the point <laughs> yeah. at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And I think to keep your audience, if you're going to throw them off, like, all right, we understand that we're going to be with them for a long chunk of time. is just walking through the woods. Let's We can fill that with something else or more as the movie goes on, I think. So we're I, not just doing the same thing through the entire movie but i think i think they were just being so literal with being like this is such a deconstructed stripped down minimalist approach of yeah he would be walking a lot so we're going to show him walking a lot and i think that's all the more there is to it i think that is the thought is like he would be walking a lot so we're going to show him walking a lot and there's a reason that jason quote-unquote teleports later on well okay i don't want to watch those scenes so people people keep saying it's like a video game but if you've played the friday the 13th video game you don't walk this much you can teleport in that game i mean just on that specific point right 
are people because all the reviews that I read prior to the movie, mm -hmm. nobody mentioned video game. It's not when I saw game. it, I sat there and I'm like, well, this is taking the third per person video game perspective, right? And mm -hmm. putting it, it's a slasher movie done from video game third person perspective. Now, again, you know, even that is mm -hmm. a bias that I have because I play video games right. and I have played the Friday mm -hmm. the 13th video game and you do follow Jason around. Yeah. I read an interview with Chris Nash, mm -hmm. the director, and he was like, no, I'm not a gamer, you know, cause there's scenes where it switches mm -hmm. to like an overhead perspective, yeah. like all of these perspectives that you are familiar, at least I'm familiar with from it's video game, language. video games. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And, but he was unaware of that apparently. Okay. Now, whether everybody yeah. on the crew, yeah. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, the people who are planning the shots, I don't know, Yeah, but that's kind of the, the movie that we're trying to describe is like you are watching then someone else play a third person video game mm -hmm. you have no control over it and you're just kind of watching that sounds like the most gen z shit in the world mm -hmm. but it, the, people you know, watching other people play video yeah, games. yeah. It so does. right and then also plays into i guess like you know uh, that is what people watch nowadays mm -hmm. so it maybe is. maybe it isn't meant for us i don't i, I don't know but, on certain <laughs> levels it is but yeah yeah you question that i i was hoping for to get some actual like pov shots though if we're gonna stay with the killer the whole time and didn't really feel like we got any of those you no. know it was always like no. third person perspective but yeah, and I I knew from the opening scene because the movie opens where we see this locket hanging on like the like wood ruins of a house, and for and you just you're lingering over it for so long, and you're just hearing all these voices of people around you, you have no context, and I was like, oh, this is like a Gus Van Sant movie. I knew from like that first shot because it lingered so long on that locket, which actually like which one? Because I guess I haven't seen the the reference. That yeah. uh, Last days there. is like that. Last okay. days. There are so many scenes of Kirk Co Kirk Cobain in that movie. Michael Pitt just walking through the woods barefoot forever in that movie like it's a lot of lingering on just everyday normal things for way too long like that well i've heard the other comparison is like terrence malick mm -hmm. right and i think of like his stuff like the new world where mm -hmm. you're in the woods and there's a bunch of following people around but he at least cuts you know right now that you know the, the scenery change it's still them walking in right. the center of the screen but now they're in a different place right now they're in a different place. like okay we've telegraphed mm -hmm. that or teleported from you know, mm -hmm. this position to this position, he's getting closer to his, you know, yeah. Yeah, but Terrence Malick has more of a, um, the effect of human beings on nature. Yes. Right? It seems to be like part of his, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that from this at all. So that's why it's like that. That's that to me is like a lazy comparison, you mm -hmm. know, that it's like a Terrence Malick movie. It, it's not concerned it about, you know, the impact of these characters on you know yeah i don't think this movie's trying to really say much of anything right it, let alone anything that kind of i think it's having a lark yeah. i think that seriously is like the yeah. whole intent of it was just can we it, do it it's, it's either having it a lark or it's a bad movie yeah exactly i think mm -hmm. because it's 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 real hard to especially when it comes to like the characters in the movie i know what we're following our, our main character is um Johnny, 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 uh, we're following Johnny around. He's in, you know, he's the main character and everything, but we do have the group of quote unquote teenagers, 35 mm -hmm. year olds. Yeah. I swear to God. College um, student. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sure. <laughs> Going back to school after their kids have gone off to college, it feels like for these people. Um, but they're not. And you could anyone could watch this movie and say, oh, well, that's uh, also part of the send up of these type of movies like Friday the 13th and everything that the characters aren't. Uh, they're not smart. They're not written well. I don't think they're written well. Not even not to be, but I don't know if that's on purpose because of what he thinks of these movies. Because you know, uh, I think it's intentional. I think it's like, have you guys seen that insurance commercial where it's like the kids in the slasher movie and they're like, why don't we go hide behind the wall of chainsaws? <laughs> right, right, I think yeah, that's yeah, this movie's idea. attitude. Yeah, yeah right, it's okay. like we know these characters are dumb and we're not even gonna try to hide it in this movie. They're just gonna be flat, two dimensional. Okay, they're but gonna I, be fodder for kills, you know. But okay, I. But then, but then you're following into the you're falling into the exact constructs of these movies. Exactly. And doing yeah. that, and so you aren't deconstructing sense. it. You are just being the movie. It's, it's just giving you a different perspective on it. Right. Yeah. Right? And okay. it's relying on your fami over familiarity with this. I because I guess 
all the performances, I mean, I don't know if it was the writing or the performances or, I mean, there's, there's no, there's no, no characters there. No. Right. Right. They I are. I tell they you are. his name in this <laughs> no, movie. And I mean, again, when we talk about this, sounds more purposeful, but yeah, they are cardboard characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the cop or the ranger who's just like, my dad did this and his dad did this. The yeah. Tommy Jarvis that yeah, comes in the third act. Tommy, yeah. I thought it was Yeah. You know, I had a lot yeah. of like, it, for some reason, the movie that occurred to me the most through watching this was Jason Lives. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I was like, oh, you know, it's like, because Jason Lives, I guess is you know jason is he's asleep dead at the bottom of the lake tommy jarvis wakes him up and he wakes up and he's like well i remember the camp and he goes back to the camp and kills a bunch of people and then he's like tommy jarvis that motherfucker woke me up <laughs> and he goes mm-hmm. beelining for him at the end and then it's laid to rest again and the mm-hmm. i mean, like that seemed to be yeah on the back of my mind yes. the whole way that watching. guy even looked like tommy jarvis i know like, i'm like yeah, they, yeah. they totally did that yeah. it's like this is the guy who you know uh, went against him before right um so the movie yeah, uh, it, it begins like Michaela said with uh, you know in this uh, what is it collapsed fire yeah. lookout yeah. shack yeah. or something. I did really like this. This there's a there's a few things in here that I did really love. I like the mythology of Johnny. I think that's interesting. That's good. Yeah. I like that the fact that we don't you know we always see a locket getting taken away and then for the next five minutes we just hear the rise of Johnny and I'm just like that's pretty cool. Oh, I didn't like that because no? it was like a wide shot and you just saw like dirt moving and it wasn't like I wanted a cool like. Yeah, emergency. It was you know, obviously, I want the traditional slash, <laughs> right? Just know? like, but those yeah. elements I love so much, uh, yeah, I want it. I know. I, I, I mean, on the locket thing, I did laugh at the number one motherfucker moment <laughs> later on, and I laughed pretty funny. hard at that. So, yeah, um, funny. and like the the random mirror. Well, I guess we can go in order, but yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, that was weird. Yeah. If we go through it, I, yeah, like, I think like a lot it, of yeah. these things, you know, harken back to you know, again, it's Friday the Thirteenth for me, but. Yeah. Uh, right. The locket is ta- we hear dialogue, right? You don't actually see anybody, but there's uh they, they talk about this locket like it looks like it's we are in a grave site and there's a horrible massacre that happened here, the White Pines massacre, and that locket's probably there for a reason. And so a hand comes in from off screen and takes it, and then yeah, we're treated to the rise of Johnny. Johnny looks like I mean, it's Jason it's for Kano. all it's intents Jason. and purposes, yeah. especially yeah, the body yeah. language. There's even a few moments where you get that whole that whole body breathe that, yeah. Yeah, that Kane Hodder does. Mm-hmm. You're just like, I know what mm-hmm. that's from. So you're like, okay, you recognize the iconography yeah. here, and now we're gonna see like what a Friday the Thirteenth movie is from his perspective. Where where is he gonna go? Mm-hmm. Um, I did read an interview with uh, Chris Nash. I guess they reshot four weeks. Yep. Of the movie because the guy that they had originally chosen to play Johnny um, had some serious medical issue and mm-hmm. had to leave the the filming. Mm-hmm. And so they brought in a replacement and they shot the rest of the movie with him. And then when he cut it together, he realized, oh, shit, like, you know, he said he didn't notice it when, you know, you figure you get the guy with the same build and right. you know whatever. Right. But when they put it together, it was like. These there's that actor. Oh, there's the other actor. There's yeah, that actor, you could tell. The and they're like, they are not the same person. Yeah. So they Yikes. went back and had to reshoot. <laughs> like, see, I think he said That's 70% brutal. of the movie. Yeah. And he, he was able to get like the actors to, to come together. And he like relied on friends and family and all that to shoot the movie mm-hmm. basically twice. So they could have a consistent performance from the killer. Mm. Um, the killer wanders through the woods. We watch this as he then uh, comes upon a house um, and there's a sheriff's ranger there and he does seem to favor the sheriff's ranger. Like that's yeah. where he's headed, mm-hmm. but the guy takes off in a truck. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's like, okay, so then I guess that's giving you some character uh, world building for the killer. Yeah. There is this ongoing conflict of this guy's always putting traps on this part. Oh, the property. other guy, the guy, yeah, the guy that the guy that yeah. owns a house and is arguing with the sheriff is always putting like the old school bear trap yes. like, on the park. That Don't even forget that later. when we're talking yeah. about the end of this movie. Yeah, that just comes back a, a lot in this movie. So, except yeah. when it should have. Yeah, mm-hmm. at the very end, but. Mm-hmm. Well, but it also is establishing that there's some kind of backstory between the Rangers, right? Yeah. And so the, it is foreshadowing, I yeah. suppose, as far as plot goes. It's like, this is going to put a pin in this because it's mm-hmm. going to come back later. Yep. The killer goes inside the house undetected. We see it, right? Mm-hmm. But he wanders in and then uh, 
I believe, did he see the locket in the first pass? He sees the mirror. He has the mirror vision. Yeah, this is weird. Of, really? was that his mom? Dad? I don't remember. I think it was his dad. Dad? It's a, yeah. And like, his dad's holding the locket in the mirror vision, and then the vision fades, and he sees the lock over his, locket over his shoulder behind him. He reaches for it. Yeah. But then the guy, something happens where the guy, oh, the guy like comes in and says, I thought I told you to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And then he attacks him. Mm-hmm. So the mirror vision thing. I, I think read that as a Friday as... the Thirteenth Part Two moment or something yeah. with ghostly uh, Jason's mom somehow yeah. is crafting. It's like he's seeing uh, when this locket, which somehow has a magical mm-hmm. power, right? Yeah. It, it was keeping him in the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, was given to him as a child by his father. Yeah, but then because his uh, mom died and he gave it. Yeah. But we, I don't think we know that yet, right? When does the, the explanation... Oh, because the campfire. They have the campfire yeah. scene, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he pursues this uh, guy in the house who's coming at him with a, a shotgun. And I think this is also where we kind of get the idea, like, yep, like Jason, you can shoot him. Yep. But... Uh, it just slows him down, is what yeah. the Tommy Jarvis says later. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did kind of like the idea that, like, they don't show you his face. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. really reading the back of his head and looking at the makeup effect, and like mm-hmm. I can see through the cut in the clothing where they. Yeah, you know, I wondered how long they'd keep that going without seeing his face if they'd ever. I would have been fine anyway. never seeing it. I would have too. Yeah, I thought they weren't ever going to show. Yeah, it. I, that's what I thought. And then they did. And then, yeah. the, and then we get <laughs> a, like Jason. a whole face close up. <laughs> yeah, this dude. Um. Okay, so he heads in. So then he 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 returns to the house. And or he chases that guy out in the woods and right. he kills him. Yeah, he returns to the house and he hands. grabs the locket, but this locket is not his locket. It says number one motherfucker. Yeah, it's on the it. number one yeah. motherfucker's locket. Yeah, it also has a hat that says yeah. number one motherfucker. He went and he went into that um, truck stop that day, saw that whole <laughs> section of number one motherfuckers, and it was the best day of his life. Do you think he has the vanity plate too? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, guaranteed. <laughs> But Bell this buckle. Has yeah. kind of established that, like, okay, the killer's motivation is I want my goddamn locket back. <laughs> <Right>. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yes. It really is That's that simple. Yep. Yep. But at this point, he's lost because somebody has taken the locket and now he's wandering around and he's killed a dude and he's just out walking in the woods and avoiding these bear traps. And then he sees headlights. And this mm-hmm. is the introduction of the campers mm-hmm. yep. going to the cabin. Mm hmm. So he heads after them. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe night falls. He ends up, they have a uh, uh, campfire. Mm-hmm. And this is like the Friday the 13th part two campfire scene. We yes. are going to get the backstory on the killer. What is, what do we, what do we learn about the characters? And the, I guess like this is still first act. So they're setting up. Like what the what the gist of the movie is? Yeah, and I'm setting up a couple dynamics between the characters. Um, uh, it is revealed which character took the locket, so we get kind of that. This is where we mm-hmm. finally see everybody's faces and not just hearing voices off screen. We get the fact that the guy, I think the guy who took the locket, used to date the what ends up being the main girl, the final girl, the final girl. Um, and but she's also but she's now dating one of the other members of the group. And they brought the dude up there. So this is kind of a, there's a love triangle mm-hmm. yep. ish going on right there. Standard, right? Mm-hmm. For, for yep. any 13th kind of movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you know that. who all these people are. Yep. And then we get the story um, from, I would guess, the, the jokester of the group. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us kind of the whole story of the White Pines Massacre. Which is? Which is, okay. This story was more convoluted than it needed yeah. to be. I had yeah, struggled this, to follow it I mean, a little basically bit. Basically, what this you're going to get out of it is there was a massacre years ago, and the sole survivor was uh, tracked down by the forest rangers or something and killed, right? He yeah. was this kid, right? I think well, it was a child. <laughs> I don't, but no. Uh, the part I, the, there was like three parts to this story that made it extra complicated because there was the part where they told Johnny to go up on the fire tower. Yeah. And then they scared him with the old school fireman mask. And he fell off. And he fell off and they said he was paralyzed. They say he broke his neck, but does that mean he he died or was he paralyzed? I, I, I don't know. I thought he died at yeah. that point. Um, but that's important because the fire mask oh, comes no. back later. Oh, no. The, he fell off They and then they put that mask on him yeah. and they said, oh, he fell off. Yeah. 
Maybe they, yeah, maybe they pushed him. I don't know. I forget. They said that they scared him with the fire mask and he fell and then they covered him with the mask. Right. Like, oh, he was like just fucking accident. around. Yeah. yeah. But then there was something with Johnny's dad confronting somebody at the ranger station and that resulting in a fight because of what happened to Johnny. It was super I convoluted. Like Jason's mom. Yeah. 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 And then somehow there was another, like 10 years later. Yeah, this, he's, there was he's another, risen from the grave before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as what, 10 years <laughs> because earlier. Because as you he said, he's like, he, this is right. like so, Jason lived. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, that, so he died, was in the ground, mm-hmm. and then came out, there was a massacre, and then went back in the ground, and this is 10 years after. So that. yeah, we're coming in on like the eighth movie of this yeah. franchise. Yeah, 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 yeah. We really are. Yeah. <laughs> we really are. <laughs> but again, it's relying on you to know this yeah. stuff, right? Like, right. Right. Um, and I did enjoy the scene of them telling the story but because it's a trope I like. I was like, yeah, let's get all cozy yeah. by the campfire and listen to this story. I'm down. Like, yeah. give me the mythology. I I, the, I like that, too. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's something about the the falseness or maybe not the greatness of the acting that hits my ears weird. Where yeah, I, no, they're I not good. But I'm but I feel like I expect that from a slasher movie. Not good acting from these people, you know? So, uh, well, I mean... Like, so you forgive like it's, it because it's like, well, it's... In but should we? It's the trope I want. See, this is where it's giving me a little bit of what I want. That's why I like it. But right. I but I think for the thesis of this movie, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Wouldn't this movie make more sense if you had a bunch of, like, A-list people in these roles or something? Well, I guess, Colin, you're saying it's not really trying to deconstruct. It's just a different perspective, right? You're saying that this is the same, like, Friday the 13th movie, but literally just from... Yeah. I mean, that's how the I mo- took right. it. Yeah. They're yeah. saying yeah. that these characters don't matter. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. the movie yeah. is saying that. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the criticism that right. those movies always have. It's right. like, okay, well, now we're going to give you an actual center- central character right. with a motivation. Right. <laughs> he wants to fucking lock it back. Yeah. Um. So... They do some cool stuff here because this is the, it breaks away from the third person perspective, mm-hmm. and we actually get in with the group around the campfire. But there's always the idea, and I guess I was always looking in the background because mm-hmm. I knew he was there. Yeah, and you're looking for him. Yeah, that is in the background of the shot. Okay, like, when they take that selfie and he's in the background, I was cracking the fuck up. That was hilarious. The flash <laughs> lit up his face right <laughs> over their shoulder, and they didn't even know. I was. I wanted to so see the funny. picture of the dude just being like, <laughs> yeah. Throw Throwing up the peace sign in I the know. very far back. But I like that we never, so yeah, we never see this selfie. No, no. we hear about it. But yeah. we hear about it later. They're like, that was the dude in the picture, you yeah. know? Yeah. So because you know w- w- the whole plot line that happened <laughs> right. because right. you're you're over familiar with movies. Right. Like yeah. We don't even have to do it. Um, we just have to end. There was another thing, uh, part of the style of this movie Um I wasn't sure, and that's why I kind of want to ask you guys. Mm-hmm. Does Johnny have superhuman hearing? Uh, I say this because every, like when he was approaching that house, mm. the, the first time we saw it, I thought that that dialogue scene between the guy and the ranger was like going to be like 25 feet away, but it was like 150 yeah. yards away, but it was clear as day you because do, we're at yeah. Johnny's perspective and the whole movie plays like that. Yeah. He is listening to characters talk and later as they're hiding and he's like listening to them. <laughs> we got to do, you know. Yeah, it and he does feel that I'll way. distract him. <laughs> yeah. I know. T- I know. I was laughing when they were like, you distracted him. I'll go set up the trap. I was like, wow. Could like, not wow. Be we got a whole more. plan yeah. going on here. <laughs> I know. And we yeah. just are staring at the killer as he's waiting. He's yeah. just waiting yeah. for them to do something. I'm like, that's a com- that is a yeah. comedy bit. Well, yeah. in the Friday the 13th video game, Jason kind of does have a super hearing yeah. ability. Yeah. So he can like hear and then he can like sense too. Yeah, so got, he, yeah, it I makes think sense. He can echolocate. Yeah, at he that basically point. can in that yeah. game. And there's times too where you can like see <laughs> like heat maps of people as Jason too. <laughs> But yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go that far. That would right. have been funny if they went to his perspective and it was is just he, a heat he, map, he, like yeah. that's how he sees. Yes. <laughs> no, see, that'd be funny. Well, that'd but be I think too much that's, go, that's too yeah. far. Yeah, that's yeah, going a little too far. <laughs> um, he can just see horniness, like it, it radiates throughout. The, the so, <laughs> well, speaking of horniness, yeah. right? Like, uh, I mean, that's another thing that the Friday the Thirteenth movies uh, have, mm-hmm. and this movie because it's in 2024 either subvert your expectations or, you know, uh, deny your expectations. Yeah. There was but a scene Jason where... Jason wouldn't be seeing any of the... Well, he'd be seeing some of it, I guess. That yeah, window yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, the window yeah. shot is what yeah. I was thinking of. Yeah. Girl comes to the window, she's wearing a bra, then I think something distracts him, and he has to go, because mm-hmm. the oh, funny guy is like... She shuts the... She shuts the curtains, yeah. and then the funny yeah. guy comes mm-hmm. out the... 
Um, so they're like, they're paying lip service yeah. to it. They're like, okay, this is the scene, but we're not actually going to do it. And I then, guess I was just thinking about the like yoga, like the pool lake scene where she goes in the water. Like, I feel like that would have been skinny dipping in a different yeah. movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. in the context of the conversation those two were right, having. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, because it does give you, it's the same conversations that you would hear in the mm-hmm. horny teenager movies, but now they're lesbians. Right, I guess, right. Because so, yeah, it's 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, there was, uh, so I mean, that's a twist on the formula. Is it? We're saying it's just taking the same scene and gender flipping. Yeah, that's all it's yeah. really doing. Yeah. Um, he wanders around. This is back at the house, right? Yeah. A guy comes out, and there's a whole spiel about basically we have to get this guy to go do something. So when we kill him, in the for the sake of the plot, no one will miss him. No one will miss him yep. until like the next day. Yep. And so they contrive this thing where like he's going to go pick up these gas station girls. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he says he's just going out in the woods to take a shit. Mm-hmm. And so he wanders off, and then we get our second kill of the movie. Um, do we see that one? We do. It's the he gets he grabs a hacksaw. Oh yeah. And then yeah. Okay. I did like this one. I, I, I was like, all right, I've seen this one before. Yeah. Um, it, again, familiar. I think it's what he does after. Yeah, the, yeah, it's more probably, the shocker. But, oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he ends up dragging. So he cuts like the guy. I think he does the intruder bit, right? Yeah, like, like the intruder bit, the uh, my, my bloody, bloody Valentine bit, yes. and yeah, that bit where the, the, the right maniac, through the mouth, remake yeah, bit, yep. through the mouth, cutting the head off, and then yeah. But then he grabs the body, yeah, and carries it by like the jawbone almost. <laughs> yeah, so he's yeah. dragging this guy with no yeah. you know, like no no brain in his skull mm. and his the top of his head. Yes. Back to the ranger station. I'm like, okay, so this is going to be that scene. It's the killer's body layer where yeah. eventually some characters run in there and find all the bodies hanging right. from the. And uh, he deposits them in there. And then I believe he a, uses it to smash the glass open on the case with the weapons. The, the body. Oh, he does. Yeah. He, d- he, he uses does. it he like a weapon a few it. times. Yeah, that's that why I was like, what funny. is it? Where, where are we going with this? It's that brutal. It's that Kane Hodder like brutality yeah. moment. If and it was a person, I would have felt it more. But I. But, yeah. But, but so this is why I question everything now. Is I'm like, did he did he do the dummy on purpose, knowing that it's like, all right, it looks a little dummyish. That's fine. Yeah. It there works was that, for the movie. That shot where the the head landed right in the key light. I was like, that's <laughs> oh, amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. I wonder if they were if they shot that and they were just like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, like if it landed perfectly, like right mm-hmm. side up and in the light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just like, wow, good day for them. Mm-hmm. So in here, he we get, um, I think we get the fireman mask. Yep. yep. We get all, and we all the get weapons. The, and the weapons are all Because he's got a hook. Uh, a, a hook uh, on a chain? It's like two hooks, but yeah. he wraps one around him so he can use it to throw at people and an axe mm-hmm. and then the old fireman's helmet. So... Which, can you imagine getting being in a fire back in the day, Good and then God. the person who comes and saves you is wearing that shit? Okay, but there's times it looks hilarious. From oh, a yeah. distance, it looks hilarious. Up close, it looks horrifying. Like, there's a, that shot when he walks out of the lake, and you just see the head bobbing up alongside the dock was hilarious, because he looked like a wet <laughs> owl. Like, the eyes were all big, oh, and it was, like, did. smooth down all flat. It, but did. other times, yeah, the eyes are really big, and there's, like, a slit on the front. It's strange. Yeah. It's like a burlap. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah. I have a sack of a head, mm-hmm. basically, with these giant. He looked to me like um, <clears throat> maybe like a, a minion from uh, yes. Despicable Me. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, oh, but my question, because I know, I, I guess, I haven't actually looked this up, but I assume then that this is an actual like turn of the century Let's see. fireman yeah, mask. I would guess so. In which case, I'm like, when did this actual massacre take place that they would still be wearing these uh you know 100 year old masks i mean it may have been just a thing uh it looked like it was like around. a museum display right yeah. it was probably one of the things yeah. sitting around and everyone passes it think it's scary and so they use okay it to scare antique the fireman masks are pretty horrifying oh no <laughs> look at this one it's got oh, like well, square okay. eyeholes well it's yeah it's basically yeah similar yeah but okay. again terrifying yep. but i guess that's oh, well look at that one looks just like it look at that one on the right or on the left oh yeah that's pretty much yeah, yeah. okay so yeah, my question is, Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. when you are designing your movie slasher, mm-hmm. um, and they ultimately have to have a mask, and we are now at the point where every single mask has been used. Yes. <laughs> All of them. All of them. Yep. Although I, I, I tell you, I have never seen this one before. However, mm. I was sitting there going like, okay, is that made to be fearsome or sinister? Or 
surreal is it is it leaning into the like well that's goofy looking i think it depends on whatever perspective you take if mm-hmm. you take the perspective of a, a woman doing yoga on a cliff and you turn around and you see that coming yeah. At you, yeah horrifying yeah terrifying but we're always behind him we are always well for most of it yeah mm-hmm. we see we see it from I the mean, front he's side on the poster times, yeah. i guess is you right know, it's like yeah. what you see but i was just kind of like I guess even seeing the mask, I was like, am I supposed to be taking this seriously? Again, deadpan. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, again, no, yeah, especially me. later on when he's <laughs> like sitting behind the tree and he has <clears throat> taken the mask off. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when he goes to like put it back on, he just kind of shuffles it down on his head a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And where it's a little it's a little goofy. It's a little, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, an eight year old who's been dead and risen from the grave <laughs> a couple times. Kind of his. Yeah. It doesn't give you that kind of, it, I mean, it's not as sinister as a hockey mask or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't it, know. But it's rather large I and like cumbersome. I like that they picked something that makes sense for the location, though. Sure, like, yeah. I like the mythology of and it goes like with an old f- ranger's equipment, you know? Right, and the old, he died in the old right. fire uh, tower and mm-hmm. everything. So it all it all works with it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, can, I guess I can't. No, I wouldn't fault the mask in this. Like, it all works for yeah. whatever they're doing. However it comes off to you, it comes off funny sometimes. Mm-hmm. It comes off scary sometimes. It's an origin story that makes more sense than the hockey mask in Friday the 13th. I suppose. Yeah, it's a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this has mm-hmm. some sort of mm-hmm. tie Connection the, to yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. So. So he grabs his weapons. His and weapon dawn weapon. breaks, right? Am I am I wrong? There? And a beautiful shot. <clears throat> there's some. A be- uh, there, he does walk around a lot, but there's some beautiful shots in this mm-hmm. movie of just nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, nice. got, they caught the the fog in the lake in the morning. Yep. And, yeah, and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, very, very talented. Ter- a rising sun from a field of beautiful flowers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, oh damn! Like that's I mean, if it wasn't, that's the poster. And like, <laughs> no, I mean it's well shot. I mean, mm-hmm. right for yeah. what it is in four I, by three know, or uh, yeah, what do they call it? academy ratio? Yeah, aspect. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's four by three. He mm-hmm. said that he shot it widescreen just in case. He did because the trailers are all widescreen. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he You'd said that once they said, you know, he's like, I want to do it. You know, I, I'm guessing Shutter produced it. It's a Shutter original. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's an acquisition or are they behind it. But they were like, yeah, no, sure. I do like that Shutter movies are like the A24 of horror. Like somehow mm-hmm. Shutter is a theatrical brand. Like Hammer yeah. Films or, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was know, pretty something. crazy seeing that logo in front of a movie in theaters. Right. That's so weird. a bunch of them yeah. now. Yeah. And it's, um, it is, it's nice. They have a little base of operations and they're streaming and all that yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they just make But movies they are well. putting movies in theaters because yeah. uh, 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 Watcher was one and Late yeah. Night mm-hmm. with the Devil was one. And I yep. think there's been maybe one or two others that was Infinity uh, Pool, one of theirs. I Maybe. Maybe. Um, the Clovich Killer was one of theirs, too. Oh, there we go. That's that a good was one. a really good one. Yeah. I like their, um, this is just a really quick sidebar, but mm-hmm. I like their um, philosophy that while every other streamer buys TV series, they buy movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're like, we're going to give you movies, which I kind of I like because mm-hmm. you're only in for an hour and a half or two yeah. hour investment and you're out. You don't have to put six to ten hours of your life right. you know, into these things. You can you can get through more on Shutter. Right. You and you do got to tr- kind of trust in that philosophy because the other way of thinking, they buy TV shows so they can keep you coming back yeah. to yeah, watch yeah, yeah. all that. So it's a ballsy move. To it is kind of straight with that. It, yeah. it just feels like they're, you know, searching film festivals far and wide to acquire anything mm-hmm. that's remotely horror. Right. Um, so um, Dawn Breaks, and uh, I believe that is the uh, yoga. Dawn story. Breaks, yes. and we're not talking about the yoga lady. Her name is not Dawn. Yeah. She does yeah, break. She does break. <laughs> Eh. That would be a good chapter break to listed later on. It's <laughs> like Dawn Breaks yeah. and her, the character's name was Dawn. That would be pretty funny. If they do that in the Blu-ray release, I, I'll, I, I'll buy it. <laughs> was there any dialogue there between the two girls? They're like, uh, they're going up, I think, yeah, to the summit or something to do yoga. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they go there's the some Lake. flirtation that's going on. And the one girl, what does she say? Like, I'm going to go down to the... The lake and do some spreads, and then you can come. She, and she, stretch you can come or, stretch me out. Oh, you can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to the lookout and yeah. to stretch out. And if you want to join me, you can help stretch me out. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes uh, back. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But then, so the one girl goes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. They're down at the at the water. Yes. 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 And one girl's going swimming, yep. and the other one goes up to do the stretches. So. Mm-hmm. Johnny is across the lake, mm-hmm. but he's he super hearing. He yeah. can hear it like it's right next yep. to him. And there's this scene that apparently they had to shoot like because they were trying to do like the camera moves across the water. 
Uh, uh, even though he's below, like, follow, like, like follow, following uh, him, even though he can't see him, he's below the surface. That's tough. But they couldn't figure. That's it. what the video game does. Yeah, they, <laughs> when you go in the water, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's tough unless you're using a drone. Yeah. But that might disturb the water. Yeah. So who knows? Well, yeah. Apparently, they couldn't get it to work. But they tried multiple mm-hmm. times, and eventually, were like, "Fuck it, okay, mm-hmm. what are we gonna do?" So he walks into the water on one side of the the bank, and then. We Which watch is, forever, right. and then the girl goes, Whoop! like Jaws, and yeah. she disappears beneath the surface. Yeah. Right? I could have, um, I like this. I could have used a little more struggle in the water from the girl instead of just being drowned and everything yeah. like that. So, it's a non gory kill. I, yeah. I, this is like when I knew I wasn't going to get at what I wanted from this movie because mm. I was like, yeah, I wanted more struggle too. Right. But the I think, idea is great. But they're putting they're prioritizing the ambient setting over the narrative here. So instead of because like what I'm expecting is lots of music stings and thrashing and underwater cameras and That's stuff, right? Quiet. But mm-hmm. instead, this is the opposite where it's just placid water, nature sounds, a little yeah. bit of bubbling. That's it. And then we you well, I guess you're waiting yeah. for right. the you're watching, to happen. Right. You're waiting then, for the pull down. Right. And then he pulls her down, and then I think so sometime later she bobs up, and I was kind of sitting because it seemed like a long shot, and I'm like, yeah, how is she breathing during the, the actress? Right. You know, during this, you know, how they pull this off, and then he comes walking up out of the water uh, afterwards. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, that's well executed. Right. I mean, for you know, maybe it wasn't what they originally intended. Even if she popped up and like. You just happen to notice, like, her head was twisted all the way back. Mm-hmm. Something like, you know, maybe I just, just more than just a drowning, but again. Well, I guess I was going to say, I feel like we just don't see him make contact with people a lot in this movie. But I guess later on in the kills we do. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah because well, the, 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 the structure of the those type of movies is usually, you know, single people being picked off and nobody witnesses it mm. and then later there's an attack on like a larger group or something that leads to the confrontation with the mm-hmm. final girl it does i mean it follows that to a t mm. he goes up to the summit where the yoga girl is yeah and we get the kill that everyone's talking yes yeah, yeah. so this kill <laughs> if it would have been in a friday the 13th movie would it be an all-timer no or no. is it nope. so far over the top that it is comical. I thought it was hilarious. I, I, hilarious. I thought uh, it was hilarious. We laughed, yeah. We laughed. I was just going, uh. <laughs> Yeah. Because he guts her. He, he, he like guts her for he punches through her stomach. Right. He punches through her stomach with the hook. First of all, she could have jumped and gone down yeah, that she hill. Could've. Well, and what's interesting is because there's no music cues or nothing here, there's no there's no jump scare and there's no like you just see her turn around and kind of look stunned for a second and yeah, yeah. and yeah she does look down this hill which we see later she very easily could have gone down I which... thought she was like that turnaround was almost like a resign to like yeah okay yeah. she what you're gonna do to me right. yeah and right. this is and but I, again you I can... think that is comedic I don't know if right. you know because even if they're like even if they're uh, you're, you're purposely writing this to be bad or the characters to not to be fleshed out and just be the throwaway people there's still a way i think people would react to this mm-hmm. and she doesn't react how sh- i think she should no. at all during it's this there's weird. no no scream no no yeah. no there's she's very calm mm-hmm. and she shouldn't be i don't right. i don't think which i, I know think takes me out of this <clears throat> even if we are going for that comedic version of this that still kind of takes because yeah, why would a director say yes this is a performance that i want right yeah you know which is why again i think it was I'm using this as evidence to kind of back up the idea that I think that the guy was just like, this is, he's not taking this seriously. Right. It's fun to do for a very, very, very specific audience. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, and everybody else be damned. And he thought like, yeah, five people are going to see this <laughs> or right. on shutter. And then it got, they're like, well, we could probably put this out in theaters. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I'm curious what his expectations were for it. Yeah. As far as who would, who, who would see actually it? see it. He had done some other stuff. We said he worked with uh, Astron 5, Astron 6, uh, and there are movies like The Void and... Uh, Psycho Gorman. Mm-hmm. I think the director of that worked the effects for this movie. Yeah, he they, did they, effects they, on that movie. I don't yeah, think yeah. He, he's done like a short. I don't think he's... This is like his feature film yeah, debut, I think. So. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she gets uh, punched through the chest with the hook, or mm-hmm. through the stomach with the hook. Um, he... She then turns around. Mm-hmm. He turns her back around. Mm-hmm. Takes oh he turns. She turns around. He pulls the hook out through her stomach. Turns her back around. Gets her in the head with it. Yes, and then proceeds to 
pull her head through the hole in her stomach. Yes. And but you out see the, the back. neck snap first. Yeah. The head, her chin goes down to her chest really hard and her neck snaps. Yeah. And then she just like, yeah, gets rolled up like a fucking Right. And then roll. he keeps pulling yeah. on her and her head comes through the hole. The human and percent. Yeah. It was yes. like, yeah. the sound effects <laughs> it was were gross. great. It was, yeah. yeah, it was gross and yeah. bloody. And you were sitting there going like in a slasher movie. This is actually like, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, outside of like the Terrifier movies yeah. that are like right. hardcore gore. It's right. like, this is hardcore gore. Yeah. It's just the edge is taken off exactly. of it. Yeah. I think yeah. you're right. It's like the fact that there's no music mm-hmm. and it's just kind of happening and it, and that there was no suspense leaves it in that stark moment. and kind of like, okay, now we're, now it's time to watch the special effect. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it felt like. Yeah. That's what that felt like to me. But that's why people watch the Friday the 13th. I mean, well, the the, the same people who aren't, you know, like yeah. bloodthirsty, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I'm, I'm not saying I'm above that. I mean, there's plenty of movies we go to for the kills. Yeah. Like, it, it is a thing mm-hmm. we do. It was a standout, you know, like, well, you're going to remember that, yep. you mm-hmm. know, after it, because it was just so goofy. It's meme worthy. Yeah. It's so over the top. It gets attention. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. The killer then proceeds down to uh, back to the cabin, right? Yep. And I think this is where we start getting. Um, I think this is like the big, the big moment where there's a bunch of people because now they're like, we over here. They've they've seen the guy in the selfie. Mm-hmm. Yep. They know that a couple people are missing and never came back. Yep. Mm-hmm. We need to go and call the police. Right. Yep. They're a, at that part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's an ATV somewhere that they've been riding around, mm-hmm. which they come back into. Is this? Is this where he ends up back at the cabin? I think so. Where he he's walking up and <sighs> and they toss the keys. The to- oh my oh, god, okay. that part was right. incredible. The toss the keys. <laughs> Love the that. keys. So land. This, all right, this is yeah. where they we hear they we hear the that was the guy in the in the selfie in the photo. And then there's an argument between characters. The keys are thrown. End up right at the feet of Johnny. They happen to have a little toy car <laughs> uh, has the keychain on it and. <laughs> And there's this moment where he reverts back to being, it feels like an eight year old of mind does Johnny and he picks it up and he, and he mask off at this point. Yeah. Mask off. This is where we get our first like full look at Johnny's face. Mm -hmm. And he's just playing with it. And what does he look like? Like Jason. Like, he looks like basically yeah, it's yeah. the Friday Thirteenth Part Three, Jason. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah, more, still more human. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But they've done something to his eyes to ca- give them cataracts yeah. or whatever. And he's They're got all white gross and teeth and right. Yeah. And this pat, you could see some parts of his skull in the back. Yeah, yeah but he's sitting there playing with the car and doing the wheels. <laughs> like, <laughs> blah, 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 you know, and you're like, okay. <laughs> The, like this is our brute you know killer uh, uh, but i guess that's what they've always been saying you know again jason more so than like michael myers or yes. freddy krueger it's like this is the jason archetype and now like are they making fun of him like he's so distracted by mm-hmm. a, a toy car that he sits down and is like i'm gonna play with the toy car for a little while but the the amusing thing is of course that the the guy coming out to look for the toy car can't right. see that this, you know, guys. Right, <laughs> right. you know, he finds an axe and everything. <laughs> I, I think it just shows the. I mean, it goes along with the character. It just shows the simplicity of the character. He, he's a kid, but also what he's doing is not too complicated. He wants his locket back, and if he runs across somebody, he's going to kill them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he is just walking through the woods. There's not much to the the character. He right. just has a drive to get what he wants. I would say they've always equated Jason to a shark on land. This yeah. movie equates him to a bear, but we'll right. get there. Yeah. So, uh, uh, okay. And we're running out of time, but I mean, uh, basically like the, the we're into the late second act, and so this yeah. is where things begin to ramp up. We start getting um, more kills. He kills the guy on the ATV, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, because everyone. I'm, t- I'm, I, I just remember them by the kills. Like I remember somebody gets their head smashed in with a rock. Oh, well, that was drives, great. He yeah. drives. Yeah, somebody drives away, and then he comes up behind him. And does he kill that one guy? Like as soon as the other people, he whipped a knife at somebody. He oh did, yeah, I, I did like that, that was where, great. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's certain stuff. It's just like that's great. Yeah. Where he's just like we see him and he just whips the axe. It's yeah. moments like that where yeah. the no sound really comes into it because you're mm-hmm. just like because you didn't even hear the guy go oh no you just because yeah. one guy was helping another guy whose leg got stuck chewed in the, up. Yeah. Wait, did he step in the bear trap? Oh. No, no, he just got a, He got hit in the leg with the axe. Oh, remember, that's he right, goes, yes. He walks around the entire house. Oh, that yes. was a good scene. It was, because he walks around the entire house, and he goes by a window, Yeah. and the one guy's just going, 
Yes, yeah. that part Looking was great. Looking out the window. It's a like, scene oh. we've seen from the other perspective. Yeah. Right. It's, he's trying to lure them out. Yeah. I think one character takes oh, yeah, he, off. Yeah, he sticks the, the, the tree branch in the car to start the horn. And then yes, he walks around right. the whole yes. house, and you're like, yeah. oh, that's what Jason does. How come he's never... Because yeah. he knew that they would come out. He's giving them time. Right. He walks around the whole house, and when right. they finally do come out, then yep. it's like... Whoosh. Yep. Um, yeah. And the, yeah, the guy comes out with the gun, uh, uh, shoots him. He gets the axe in the head. The other guy gets the boulder, mm -hmm. uh, smashes his head. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yep. Even though I've seen it. Before. I, I can't I was, remember. I think the- This is the second movie this year I've seen someone smash someone with the boulder. For, I won't yeah, say it's the other overhead, one because it's a spoiler, but- Overhead <laughs> shot, too, where they, that was where they yeah. switched yeah, yeah, to yeah. the- yes. Once he threw the knife off screen, it was overhead. We're tracking with him, and then the victims- <laughs> You know, yeah, or uh, yeah. laying in the ground. And the like, one guy's trying to crawl away. The other guy got the knife everyone, from the back of the head. He did. Think, everyone yeah. gives up. Like yeah. that guy was laying on the ground and gave up mm -hmm. for like felt like thirty seconds before he got a boulder on his head. Mm -hmm. This is, and again, if if this is what they're going for, all right, it works. But the 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 urgency for getting killed, like. Just doesn't. It's not there. Even They're in the bad, even in the bad movies, the urgency of not wanting to get killed uh, yeah. is there. I think maybe okay. So I mean, right there when you said that, I saw the alternate version of this movie where they actually are screaming for yeah. their lives and trying to. And would that be like the tone of it would become oh, much darker? It'd be torture, torture porn. It'd be torture yeah, porn. Yeah. Right, and right. so were they intentionally avoiding that in order? Are they trying to make a fun movie? They, I think. Okay, let me let me go with this. <laughs> For who? Yeah. I think that Chris Nash sees the Friday the thirteenth movies as fun. Yes. Okay. It would appear the so. four by three aspect right? he's like he yeah. saw them mostly they're theatrical movies, but he, he saw, saw them, them on mostly VHS. On, on VHS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he's trying to recreate the fun that he had mm -hmm. or the way that he remembers these movies as gotcha. being fun and not making like the actual sadistic uh version of this that it could have been. Mm-hmm. So then that would explain Man, he shoots it that way. Why all of these performances are the way that they are. It's right. like it's trying to head off sadism. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Know? Yeah. So in the whole history of the Friday the thirteenth movies, has anyone tried to kick Jason in the nuts? There's been a nut shot. <laughs> like I, this guy laying on the ground right under his crotch before he takes this rock to the dome could have just tried, tried to kick him in the nuts. But, yeah, but, yeah, but it yeah. seems like someone should maybe try it at least once and see Has how there, it works out. You know, been a nut shot. To, uh, there's definitely there's been, been a nut tw shot. What, 11, 12 of these movies. There's been a, he's been hitting the nuts. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird because I can now I have to watch them all. I can see it and the reaction, but I can't. Yeah. Pin it down to a, an actual moment. Mm -hmm. is it, or is this like moment. a scary movie thing more than a yeah, Friday he, the 13th thing? If he does get it, he doesn't react to it yeah. to, for too long. And then yeah. there's a reaction from them where they're like, oh shit. You know? I, know, yeah. I know Michael's gotten it a bunch of times. <laughs> he gets a couple nut shots. <laughs> maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Though. I think so. Yeah. Maybe because you could see it in his eyes. Mm -hmm. We don't get many eye shots of Jason. Well, I think the series, I think. But all of the characters are basically killed at this point except for the final girl and the one dude who uh because her her current boyfriend gets killed and the one who she used to date who had stolen the locket is still alive and with her oh yeah because we see the killer trying to go through the pockets yes. of one of the guys that he thinks took the locket and yeah, then maybe it's that but oh. then he saw it on the girls yeah she's like he's like get on the atv and you right. see it dangling i think this is blood or something Right? Yeah. And it's like Johnny clocks at, like, there's my lock, and now I got to go after them. Yep. So and into the woods we go, and they go to the ranger station. Mm hmm. And that's where they meet the ranger. Yep. And we get the last part of the backstory as so, Johnny is walking up to them. What's the additional backstory? Well, I think we that's, already covered that's the it. whole 10 years. And then he came. It's like, I've, 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 we put you down before. We can do it again. Like he talks about the, the history of the, this is a thing that has happened already. And there's um, there's a part where he when Johnny breaks into the ranger's office and gets the gear where he picks up that family photo. Yeah. And it, has, it says 2014 on it. And he like drops it down. Maybe that was supposed to be that guy. I wonder. Because I think he remembers the people yeah. who, who put him in the ground. Right. The last time. right. Yeah. yeah. And because I think this guy said it was like his father did it. Yeah. And then he did it the yep. last 10 years ago. He did it. Yeah. He yep. killed. And he's like. 
And this and is that's where, why I'm a ranger of this park to make mm-hmm. sure nothing happens. Mm-hmm. And he, but he is the one who does the explicit supernatural, which just comes out of the blue. I mean, I guess you are following a walking corpse, but he's like, right? You disturbed that locket. That locket right. was the only thing that was holding yeah. his soul and, from and, you and know. We, did see a, we saw a vision in a mirror within the first yeah. okay. fifteen yes. minutes yep. of this yeah. movie. So but this is the this is the supernatural thing that usually yes. shows up in these movies, right? Yes. That, right. You know. Um, Okay, so uh, Johnny shows up and he attacks the ranger because he's like, I remember you, you know? Yeah. And there's this protracted, well, there's also the, the, the you know, they shoot him and we have to wait mm-hmm. for eternity until yeah. he uh, wakens back up at the last second and grabs the gun and mm-hmm. go get the chains. I'll, yeah, this whole <laughs> this whole part is like, I'm on this gun to you. All right. This this whole thing. <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, he's like, go get the chains. And he grabs like, two very small chains. Yes. I'm like, this isn't going to hold nobody. Like, mm-hmm. got to be purposeful for funny, right? Because yeah. it has to be. Okay. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, then uh, again, they're just like, we're going to chain him up and we're going to take him and we're going to go put him back and everything. But then, you know, he wakes up, grabs the gun, uh, injures the uh, the ranger, ends up breaking his spine, Yeah, apparently, so that he is paralyzed. And then we get a, a very long scene uh, of the ranger's demise. It's very protracted. It goes very on protracted. forever. I was, yeah, I didn't. Uh, Where he he uses a log splitter, yeah. which is a device that uh, has like a piston log splitting yeah. axe it's edge like sharp axe edge head, thing yeah. right. that splits a log if you put it on it. So I'm like, okay, he's going to take this paralyzed guy and put him on there and mm-hmm. bisect him as mm-hmm. we've seen in Terrifier and yeah. mm-hmm. Bone Tomahawk and that kind of thing. Uh, but he doesn't. No. He like puts his arm in there and then cuts his arm off and then he puts his head in there and we watch the actor at some point through CG or whatever become a dummy Mm -hmm. and this thing like just goes in and bisects his head and you're like okay it was convincing but the Enough. real time uh, setting of this machine and then putting yeah. the pieces back on, it happened so slowly. So slow. Like that, it's, that took, I was done. If you told me this was this a horror scene. movie shot in real time, like this is a 90 minute adventure, yeah. I would believe you because right. it feels like it. Yeah, but, this could have, this is where like I get the, what they're trying to do, but it, it, what are they it's, trying a, it's to a detriment do? Well, throughout the entire thing where, where it's, it, it is kind of almost real time mm-hmm. for a yeah. lot of moments in this. I, I think it. It is to its detriment when it happens in scenes like this. I thought what was going on here, that the only thing I could come up with that explained why we spent so much fucking time on this. So much time. Is because in the um, mythology, Mm -hmm. this is his mortal enemy. Yeah. Right. I don't know that the movie that doesn't hit anybody. Like I don't know this. I mean, I know they've said it, but like, so what? I just met this guy two minutes ago. There's also a thing which is like you can say it, but do you feel it? And feel it is what's going to make you. It make just felt it, like they spent fucking forever right. on this you gotta special effect. You got to feel it in had. order for something like this to stick with you and for it mm-hmm. to not be just what it is on screen mm-hmm. is the, how I felt about it. Yeah. yeah. And so, and I think that's the problem. We're, we're not, uh, I, I'm not feeling as much of this movie as I think you would if it was, they did things a, a little more straight. Right. And I, I, I think it hurts certain moments in the movie and we'll get to an even bigger part of that in a minute. Yeah, because we're going to go into the third act, yeah. which is yeah. the getaway of the final girl and her uh, boyfriend. Uh-huh. And, and oh boy, if you hadn't seen enough walking, just wait. Well, it cuts away at this point. Is it in their point of view? Or does well, it that's what I'm saying. To... We see someone else walking for yeah. a long time now. I think it leaves Johnny and it's <laughs> like, okay, yes. now we're going to follow them. Uh, Duder steps in a bear trap. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, or no. Who, no. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm, I got this wrong. Uh, they hide and come up with the plan. Uh, apparently, yeah. That they're going to use to kill Johnny while <laughs> the, he's listening right. to Apparently, them. it's to lure him back to the toppled fire thing and set him on fire. And I think that's it. Yeah, which would have been, I guess, like a grander uh, climax. Mm-hmm. Sure. I think they skipped it because they would Money. M- well, yeah, <laughs> money. Yeah. I, I think, think it, it was. Yeah, it was money. It was definitely money. <laughs> and also, like, I don't think, even if they could have, like, if you're going with the rest of the movie and how you just get snippets, I think this would have been like a snippet thing. Like, I don't think they want to invest all that grandness into something that they may not have paid too much attention to. Like they don't with some of the characters mm. where it's just kind of happening on the side as you walk by it. I feel like that's what it would have ended up being. But uh, who knows? 
It would have at least ended your movie with fire, as we've established on this show. Is right, which is the thing it, you do. You got to yeah, burn it down at the you end. Got to burn it down. We don't. We don't know. And this is where we get. This is where I'm just like, this movie isn't serious, right? It took you this yeah. long, though. But I, well, because uh, well, again, uh, I d- I didn't know. I'm like I I, uh, I found it. Yeah, I was like, especially because I felt like. Sean and my friends were the only people actually laughing at stuff. The other people in our theater were silent. dead silent. Yeah, dead silent. The silent. Whole time. Dead silent. And I'm like, come on, guys, this is funny a yeah. little bit. And the five other people in the theater. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> right. Um, there's there's a there's a line straight out of I know what you did last summer. What I, are you I for? legit laughed at that, and, <laughs> yeah. then, and I was like, come on. I, that was when I lost my patience with our audience because, like, okay, I know you know that. Yeah, like yeah. I know that you know. Yeah. And honest to goodness, what are you waiting for? Yeah. 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 But they do. I don't know how they get. The, how do we get from the ranger to them in the woods? They when they're, run. When they're like, hiding. I think yeah. And then yeah. they go hide. Right. And they yeah. have gas, and they're gonna burn. And, right. uh, but then she realizes oh, the locket, and she just takes the locket off and puts it on the. Well, hold, but but we also like because they're this is where we get the moment where they're hiding behind a tree and just like all right, where they're just talking very yeah. quietly as he stands there, which yeah. is again I'm like all right, comedy. I uh, I see it here, but also because they're just like I'm gonna go distract him, and then you run off and do the thing, mm-hmm. and then it's it's a he ends up right behind him going hey you ugly <laughs> son of a <laughs> yeah and then that goes on forever, forever. Yeah, that is I a hate comedic it. bit it yeah. is and i hate it because it's just the, the, it's the it's a long shot because you're watching the girl with like no emotion she's just like shocked no yeah. emotion watching as the killer hacks and hacks and hacks and hacks for probably and what hacks two minutes and hacks and yeah. hacks and if you just and hacks and if, hacks. We, if, if we sat here for two minutes <laughs> for dead air you yeah. feel every second of it yep. and i kind of felt that with mm-hmm. this because that's where I was like, okay, again, it I came off it, as it's it. right, but it's a it's like an Austin Powers joke. <laughs> yeah, you know? because we're just it, gonna extend the thing until it becomes uncomfortable, then it's and then funny. it becomes funny. Yeah, yeah, it right. always loops back around. It starts off being uncomfortable, and then it becomes funny, and then it becomes uncomfortable and again. And, and he's you just hitting yeah. his head. Nothing yeah. else. Yeah, hit a body and part or it something. It was very King Hotter in the yeah. Uh, like you know they should just got King Hotter in. Yep. The, um, anyway, she hangs the locket yeah, she, on the gas gives up can, on the plan. Uh, yeah, she's like, "This is what he wants," or I don't know, even know what she thought. I, I yeah, think I so because the, right. the, the, the Tommy Jarvis told her. Told her, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. she takes off running into the woods, and it's bizarre. It's like shaky cam, and like there's weird filters on it. I and didn't care it's for this. It's darker. It's lighter. There's uh, you can hear a lot of crickets and stuff Crick- are atmosphere. very loud. Yeah, yeah, it's very loud. Um, you eventually hear the sound of the hacking again, which mm-hmm. I was either taking as, because I was exploring a bunch of things. Either we've gone Blair Witch and she's entered another dimension by taking the locket off and right. there's magic and she just keeps running around in a circle sure. uh, because it was like, did she go back to where the murder is happening? She's just like running through the, or it could mm-hmm. be her you know, psychology yeah. Yeah. breaking. You know, right. That's what yeah. all she's hearing. Yeah. Eventually, she comes out in the uh, to a street. Well, she ends up falling. Oh, it knocks herself out. I, well, she wakes up when it's lighter outside, and yep. her she has a, a branches in her foot. It's like, like through her leg. It looks yeah, like. yeah. But I'm also like, you don't get a good look at it though. So no, it's, but yeah. it's but it's like a broken branches through her leg. Yeah, which is why she knows. But I'm also like. Why the fuck were we sitting doing all the bear trap stuff earlier? Right. Like, why is this not a bear trap that maybe doesn't get all of her leg, but gets some of it, and she can right. bust out of it? And st- you still get the same injury and all that stuff. But if you did the bear but trap, you, get a, you yeah, get a connection. Exactly. You get a payoff from something that was earlier. Right. Like those reasons, I'm just like, okay, you can deconstruct everything, but there's certain things that are just like one plus one equals two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like why can't we? You can still do that and do what you think you're doing with the rest of the movie. That right. is a good question, and the fact that it's not even shown how she I mean, yes. she just wakes right. up with. It. I got a problem with that too mm-hmm. but again that may just be so maybe that's the beginning of problems with the third act she oh, stumbles out this. onto the road and she is she sta- uh, well first she stands there like like the editor didn't cut the 20 seconds before they said all right start walking yeah it's like they just stuck with that and it's a weird from here on out it's just decisions i don't understand yeah. I, it really like, loses me at this point here like it fully i don't want to say ruins the movie but it changes my opinion a it lot changes because, it because what well, are we doing what here? is the okay well so just so yeah. we can explain what it is and then we're going to do the hard work to mm-hmm. try and figure out what okay. this yep. is 
She is picked up. So the iconography is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. Yep. A pickup comes over the hill and picks her up. She gets in the car. There's an older woman in the car who then tells her, I've picked up other people along this road that have been in worse cases than you. She's the nicest old lady ever. Nicest lady. What are you expecting from this character? You're going, this is Jason's mom. Yep. Uh, he's in the back, you yep. know, of the all back those of the things. Back. Yeah, right. She'll eventually reveal her n- n- nefariousness mm-hmm. through yeah. the conversation that mm-hmm. they're yep. having. Mm-hmm. That is what that is the entire of what this setup is. It's it's there. He's working on that. Yep. Yep. And the conversation goes on for I don't know to eight minutes. Uh, it's can't. probably less than that. But it's basically oh, it what I got minute. out of it was like. Years ago, like her son was a forest ranger, and he and I'm like, wait, a connection? But no, no. Yeah, he yeah, was man. chasing a bear, and the bear would kill animals. They found dead animals all over the place, but they weren't eaten, they were just killed. Yep. And so eventually it became the bear had a, a hen house syndrome, mm-hmm. yeah. which means it just likes killing. Mm-hmm. And then eventually it moved on. Yep. And that's just its violent nature. Doesn't she say that even? I think something, something like that? Maybe. Something, yeah. Or something if right. not, yeah. why not? Because, yeah. I mean, that's right. the thesis of the movie, or not even the thesis of the movie. He's explaining movie serial killers, especially Michael Myers and Jason but and their takes, ilk, right? Like, you no know, joke, like eight minutes to say what you just said, though. Like, yeah. the pace at which she gets to this very basic point takes so fucking long. But I guess as I was listening to it, I was expecting. At some point, Mm -hmm. the turn, the turn, which never comes. So that's why in hindsight, Mm -hmm. we can say like, well, here's what she said in in a shortened version. But while you're watching it, you're like, okay, at some point, any minute, Mm -hmm. come on, what Mm -hmm. it? Now is she gonna say no? The girl is bleeding and yep. is passing out, and mm-hmm. so this nice old lady we is like, "Oh my god, we have woman, to from like this oh, yeah, actress, she's yeah." And I the hate final this. Girl. Yeah. yeah, I hate nothing. it. She's blank face. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't For, act at all. She doesn't react no a, at all. Even shock. I think that's where she's supposed to be Ooh. is shock. But, but we oh, okay. So she just lives in shock her entire life because that's all I've seen from like this character, Chris from Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. Well, yep. she at least goes into a screaming fit at Something. the end, and and Sally Hardesty, you yep. know, is going to go to the mental institution after the Texas Chainsaw. I think that's where they're going, but they don't. She's not in a screaming she, fit. Not giving us anything. And so because she is uh, is bleeding out, the woman is like, "We got to stop." in the middle of the road and put a tourniquet on. And so the girl starts freaking out. You're opening the door and like, no, we have to go. We have to go. We have to go. There's shots of her face and nature, more shots of nature, more shots of nature. And then finally the gas can and the, the locket Mm -hmm. is missing. Mm -hmm. So I took this as an homage to the end of Halloween. Uh, The evil Mm -hmm. is out there and you don't know where it is. Although he has taken the locket. So is he now just, gone is he a ghost he found the locket he got it he is at rest which is what the mm-hmm. ranger says if we're going by what right the movie right. says it would have been very funny if he like found the locket and as soon as he picked it up he just just uh, fell backwards just fell backwards like it was that instantaneous because it was when they appear because it was or something like that because yeah. when he they took it off he came right up that yeah. would have been pretty funny because the locket held him in place yes. but yep. he was never actually in possession of it and yeah. now that he is he above him does yeah. he just a mission uh, earthly mission is completed right and he can now we'll never know right. till the sequel. rest this will never have a sequel i mean is there another read on this if there is, there's we can get no, into it and wrap up. I don't think there's, I think, I don't I don't another think so. read. There's yeah. just other ways we wanted it. Yeah. For exactly. me, anyway. Because exactly. I know, because you see what they're doing with the conversation with the woman when they stop and she's just looking into the woods and you're just like, you're you're looking like, is he mm-hmm. there? Is he going to start coming up or something? But, but I already know this movie is not going to do that at this point because it's already shown me it doesn't believe in jump scares, right? And that would be a jump scare if right. he came out Right, it would be untrue to the yeah. rest of the movie. Yeah, if so I know it's not going to happen. So it almost feels like it's insulting my intelligence right. a little bit here. Yeah, and it's not, uh, not that's like, again... People have done, have deconstructed, commented on, uh, looked into the genre, and and have made things that are more satisfying. Yes, and I think that is like a, beyond the mask or behind the mask. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I was reminded of that movie a yeah. lot because that movie, laugh out loud, funny. Yeah, we had a great some, time with that. There's some good stuff in there. I think you can do all this stuff that they're trying to do. I think that you you I think you have to find a way to be satisfying on some level. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that because the third act takes so long and so much of it feels like it's unsatisfying that it 
really taints the rest of the movie for me. Like you said, uh, you you could it's, if you end well, mm-hmm. it can do a lot for you right. in your movie and everything. Um, and I don't know that they pulled that off. And I, he from from interviews I've read, it's purposeful. That's what he kind of says. Um, it, it's it's the the point of it is the fact that they boil down to that conversation and nothing does happen. Like. Okay, and you can do that, but again, I didn't feel satisfied. Mm-hmm. I don't know how everybody else feels about it, the major audience, but ah, it didn't. How does Michaela feel? It just are these wrap I mean, ups. I was gonna say it sounds uh, like wrap ups. Well, we'll save the mailbag yeah. for next week okay. when we actually sure. do the okay. scheduled movie. So yeah. sounds good. Okay, uh, you want me to go first, Count? Sure. Point. Um, we don't get to talk to Igor. Okay. Yeah. Igor, how you doing? Well, I suppose we could talk amongst ourselves during the wrap ups. So we're very yeah, yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah based yeah. on yeah. like what do you? Oh, we'll just pull it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I initially came out of this thinking it was like a deconstruction. But now that I've talked to you more, Colin, I think that I'm looking too far past the, what it actually is. And I think you're right that it is literally just a Friday the 13th movie from Jason's perspective, mm. even though it fudges that stuff a little bit at the end. But I was reminded of a movie I really love watching this, a couple actually. But I mean, I was I'm really struggling with this one because... The first time I saw Funny Games, I really hated Funny Games. <laughs> and then Funny Games grew to be one of my favorite movies of all time. Say, and yeah. Funny Games does a lot of the same. Funny Games is to like home invasion exploitation movies what this movie is to slashers. Like Funny Games is subverting your expectations of being like, oh, we didn't talk about it. There's no nudity in this movie. Nope. No, we, well, so, we, we yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But like, yes. And so like there is none of that like, you know slasher movies got always got to have a little bit of TNA that's not in this so like and funny games kind of takes that approach to nudity too it actually makes you feel like gross and uncomfortable with the nudity instead of feeling like titillated so I I like I I don't know why I like it when funny games does it but I don't like it when this movie does it and I'm trying to figure that out so I feel like maybe my opinion could change in the future but I was so excited to see a new horror movie in theaters like an original property and even if it did look like a knockoff of Friday the 13th, we're not getting any of those. So we might as right. well do the knockoffs. But I just, I like my slasher tropes and I like my stupid predictability. And I like all those things that make them what they are. So I don't like it when they're stripped away. And even though I understand what it's trying to do, it just wasn't entertaining to me. I was f- annoyed and frustrated by parts of this movie. So the, all the murdering was great, but everything in between man this movie's only 90 minutes and it is stretched to that 90 minutes it is stretched because there's not much here it's just so sparse of a movie for me and i like i appreciate what it's trying to do i agree colin i do think it is like a deadpan like send up and i do think it is funny but it it also reminded me of rubber you know rubber kind of had like a similar tone you know um and yeah probably not satisfying well yeah yeah but rubber had the kind of feeling that like the filmmaker was smarter than you there was a pretentiousness pretentiousness. i don't get that from no it doesn't feel like it's talking down to me at all and i do appreciate that and i do like it is beautifully shot and it has a good summer atmosphere but i was just like yay a summertime slasher i can't wait i'm gonna have fun and i didn't have fun and i need to have fun with the slasher movie and I mean, like Tucker and Dale versus Evil is also kind of like this movie mm. too, and that's funny. That's a legit comedy movie. Right. Like, but it is the same thing of like you're seeing it from the killer perspective, but they're not actually the killers. The teens just think they are because of how things <laughs> work out, and that's what makes it movie hilarious. And yeah, I do. I think Behind the Mask, The Rise of Le- Leslie Vernon is my favorite version of this. Um, that movie was. I mean, even though we talked about that third act as like a bad movie, but yeah, I just right. don't think right. it. Right, that's a good comparison. Yeah, yeah, I just don't think this movie. Yeah, I think satisfying is the right word, Sean. I didn't find it satisfying, and I was disappointed because I have liked a lot of the IFC and Shutter stuff that has mm-hmm. come out. Yeah. Of it. Um, and like I said, I'm, I think I maybe I pumped myself up a little bit too much for this movie, but we may have, you yes. know, it looks so promising based on the trailers. You know, it looked really cool, and like the kills were cool, and the effects were cool, and like. Like I said, I don't mind that it's a ripoff of everything I've seen because I like getting that same stuff over and over again. You're laying the groundwork here for coming back to this later and going, you know, I want to watch it again. <laughs> so, but right now, <laughs> I I can't imagine recommending this to somebody and them enjoying it, you know? Would you recommend, see, but that's, I guess, I do you have to recommend it to specifically yeah. a diehard Friday the 13th fan? I would have to, I would, I would stop, look at the person and be like, this movie is not yeah, you. Not really. For but you. I also don't uh, for, feel like this, it was for me either. So I don't know who it's for. Listen, I just, 
I think it is for the Friday yeah. the 13th no, I think, fan. Yeah. yeah, I think so. But I, I love those movies and didn't like this. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I, it's I, just, I think there's... But you're the only person who would understand it because I think... That's true, I think when when I I, I put this in the in the group chat, I, I'd recommend it just because I want uh, to someone who maybe is knowledgeable like us of yeah. these movies. Just because I wanna I want someone to watch it, and I'm like, all right, I want to know what you think. You want the discussion. I yeah. want the discussion. Yeah, and I like the discussion. Yeah, and maybe that is the point of the movie, like is to maybe. Or I just one don't of feel the like point. there's one much the to points. pick apart. Well, you know, I mean, when you get down to it, you yeah, might be right. Um, yeah, but yeah, he is stripping the thing down to like yeah, very basic bolts, elements. Yeah. Yeah. Very basic elements, so much so that he's that he's not putting anything into like um, uh, character wise. Like we're just going to keep this very simple, right? And like I definitely see a lot of the Gus Van Zandt DNA, especially from Last Days. But Last Days, it makes sense to linger on things because it's literally his last days up until he dies. So like you're going to get the most out of what you can. Spoiler, right? like well, it's, it's Kurt, about Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Kurt it's about Kurt Cobain. Right. Yeah, yes. it's called Last Days. It's literally about his last. What days. else could it be? Yeah. About? Um. So like <laughs> it makes sense that you would like leave a lot of extra footage and, and linger on him walking through the woods because at the time you didn't know this was the last days and now you know when you're editing right. the movie. But that. This movie doesn't have that kind of mechanic, so I am going to pass on it. Yeah, I'm going to pass on it. Sean, Are you passing on it? Am I passing on it? Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's a tough one. I don't, I don't want to watch it again. That's how I feel too. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. I think, and especially after the discussion here tonight, I understand it. I don't. It would have to be a very specific person I would recommend this to. I think. Um. I mean, if you're because it does, I don't want to sit here and say I hate this movie because it does some things that I thought were very interesting, very fun. Um, it's got at least one uh, a pretty good kill, but again, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's not for me. Maybe I am too caught up in the the things I like about these, you know, Friday the Thirteenth and the horror movies and everything. Where, um, yeah, I don't know. This one's a tough one. I mean, that's why we're part of the reason why we're watching it tonight because I think it had. An effect on us. Yeah, we all had opinions like we, right yeah, away, and I like that. Yeah. I like that. I was, you know, we watched a movie that I have opinions on more than oh, I was garbage. I don't want to watch it again. Like I think we have all had uh, better opinions of it than that. Um, I don't think it's garbage, but I also don't think it's the fact that it's not satisfying to me is a, is a real big problem because I think mm. we can. Uh, I and think most of that you're going to pin on the ending. What? You're going to pin a lot of that. I'm going to pin a lot of that on the ending because I understand what you're trying to go through. And I'm not going to say it didn't get me because as soon as that woman picked her up and we're sitting there in the conversation, I was waiting for the turn. Yeah. I'm the mark for it. But it's not delivering what you're expecting. No. And, and you can deliberately not giving you the satisfaction. Right. And you can, and and, and other movies have not delivered what I expected, but been good. And Mm. I've loved, and they've said something. I don't think this ends with saying anything. And maybe it doesn't, have to I don't did you know. read an interview with him where he said actually one of the biggest inspirations for the character of johnny was um no country for old no. i did anton he talks about anton <laughs> that makes Chigurh sense just being a silhouette walking through yeah. yeah he says like we tried to rip it off we failed every time it's yeah. like all right yeah i understand it. like he's like in those interviews like he's saying a lot of the things i'm just like all right i get that but they never th- ask the question you know like they never asked if he was intending to be serious. They never talk right. about the comedy. No, they don't. They don't. In any of those, it's all about how you pulled it off, right? Or the, the effects. Techno, you know, yes. that you had to have a, a third person camera. What was the rig you used? You know, right? What I mean? Yeah, and yeah, and that's what I was looking in the interviews for. Especially after I saw him, like, all right, where's where? What, what does he say about that? About his seriousness? About what everything? And he, the only thing I got was that in one interview, he said that the ending of the movie, and especially the car story and everything, kind of was like that it's important to him and he thinks that says a lot about this the movie and that was the he the best way they could wrap it up was that and i think i completely disagree what with that saying then it's like okay you have a is a man the difference between man and animal equating the killer to a bear you know, it's it has hen house syndrome and it just kills and kills until it's done. Right. The, yeah, because like, that whole story doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That whole story <laughs> doesn't matter. That's, that's my slasher. problem. That story no. doesn't matter to anything that's happened before. If it's only there as a piece to make you question the motives of the person who picked her up and maybe there will be a turn. Okay. Or it's saying slasher film is that a thesis on slasher killers in general. No, because it only because it feels to me so specifically about Jason. 
Mm-hmm. I think the whole movie feels so. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And I, and that's why I don't think when we it talks there's been a lot of general talk about slashers and the deconstruction of that. I don't think it applies to this movie. They, maybe that's my problem mm-hmm. is that we're we're I think this comments on one specific Yeah. one specific yeah. film series and I think yeah. it's just that. Yeah. And I don't think you can talk about anything else besides that because I don't think this movie talks about anything mm-hmm. else besides that. Um so a, a complete deconstruction no, I think people are being hit with something that is it, it, it is unique. It's different than what we've been seeing, mm-hmm. which is always going to get a conversation started. Mm-hmm. It's always going to pique people's interest. It got ours. It got mine. Right. Yeah. I was down to see it. So, uh, yeah, but some, we're just hard up for slasher movies. I mean, that also may be mm-hmm. the thing as well. Right. But again, uh, it, it 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 on a certain level, there is uh, this movie is a complete success success because mm-hmm. it is doing those things, mm-hmm. starting conversations. Um, uh, you know, looking at different things or looking at this, I'm not going to say the genre at this type of movie, but so it's doing a lot. It's succeeding at some things. I think it's failing very much so on other things. But again, um, it just left me unsatisfied, interested, uh, wanting to talk about it. Sure. But unsatisfied. And I think that's the reason I got to not recommend it because I, you won't be satisfied coming out of this movie. I don't think even as a regular moviegoer who isn't maybe as versed in these movies as we are, I don't think, you I don't think they'll be satisfied. I don't think no. they'll be satisfied I, yeah. either. I don't think so. They well, may, no. some I, may be confused. I don't but, think it's meant, meant but, for them though. Uh, yeah. But okay. So if it's not meant for them, then it's meant for us and I'm coming out yeah. unsatisfied. So yeah. right. I think, I don't think I can recommend that uh, an unsatisfactory experience to our listeners. So I'm going to say, no to this, even though there is interesting stuff to talk about, I'm going to pass on mm-hmm. in a violent nature, even though it's got a great fucking title, and it's just, there's there's a lot of good elements to it, but it just... Well, several weeks ago, yes, Colin. there was an announcement that oh, no. the uh, Friday the 13th series log legal log jam <laughs> had been broken. Mm-hmm. And now we get... Now, did anybody else think this was a Cartoon Network thing? Because yes. it's called Jason Universe. <laughs> Which is, I'm just like, come on, we can't call it this. You think we we're can't joking? Just say Jason Universe. It's the Jason Universe. Oh my god, which I hate it. Includes I hate it so everything much. except for movies. Everything I think. except for movies. VR experiences oh and god. books. We're going to license him out into like, I don't the, give a yeah, shit. That's the not Warner what I Brothers want. Metaverse yeah. and or whatever the fuck. I don't know. An expanded Jason Universe. D- don't care. Just bring back the game so it can get the full support that it once had. Yeah, everybody Remove the, the legal game. stipulations in the game and, and make me a fucking movie. Yeah, and that's all I want. I think that's we are. Simple in that regard. Okay. But here's my issue with that, because I can almost predict what that movie is going to be. It's going to be this now. No, 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 no. Well, no, I don't. Okay. (laughs) But that's why I like this. Okay. Okay. I guess maybe that's where I'm going into this is like, I can, I can see what the Hollywood machine would do with a new Friday the 13th sequel. If Mm -hmm. they get the green light to do it. Yeah. That does not appeal to me because mm-hmm. I know what it's going to be. It's just going to suck all over the place. <laughs> uh, this was a relatively fresh take on. Yes, I have experience with the the, the video game, and that's the closest thing. But as a cinematic thing, I hadn't seen this before. Yes, and I think when I go into these movies, as I was saying, it's like you know these kind of ambient movies. Like even I, I okay I'm gonna I'm gonna conjure the name Terrence Malick again because in his movies my mind wanders a lot and the wandering like in Tree of Life where my oh brain my wandered was like part of the experience that I remember of watching the movie even like Beyond the Black Rainbow was mm-hmm. <laughs> I, know, I know you guys hate that <laughs> but I didn't like Tree of Life either so I did like in the New World uh, mm-hmm. more but I mean th- they have these wide open empty spaces in them where your brain fills in the gaps. Yeah. And so I guess I'm taking that experience, which is singular to my viewing of this movie and coupling it with Jason lives, I think specifically and the Friday the 13th movies. So it's like they're interlocked in a way that like, I'm going to recommend this movie based on the experience that I had with it. However, it did lose me in the end. It didn't satisfy me in the end. I thought the end was tedium. I thought there could have been a better ending. But what I had seen up until then, I guess I wasn't bored with it. Um, no, I wasn't bored. You know, I, I was with it because I was amused by it. I guess that's, you know, and maybe that is because we're so 
starved of slasher films. I mean, we all went fucking crazy for Thanksgiving, which I think is the last like good, you know, like, well, it's the last one that was made and it's the last good one. And it was fun. It was a yeah. fun movie. It followed the I'm a little template. lesser than the rest of you guys on that I one. but loved That's right. But it, I mean, it's like a classic slasher mm-hmm. movie and, you know, it accomplished like a bunch of things that, you know, it's like, okay, sometimes you can't actually go back to the formula and deliver. Um, this movie is like, well, we're just going to, you know, the formula is there, but we're just hearing it off to the side. <laughs> and we're just kind of following this. Uh, uh, what would a day in the life of Jason be like? Or a day and yeah. a half, you know. What he described as like a work day for a serial killer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like he should have a lunch pail as he's walking through, <laughs> just in like he's getting ready to go work the high school. Punching clock. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, the old in. school punching <laughs> clock, yes. <laughs> that would be funny. And the, the clock out steam whistle that goes off. Right, yeah, that yeah, would good, be funny. But even in your way you're talking <laughs> so about funny. it, this is a fun, you know, I guess that's the thing. I think I, I got. Maybe what it makes you think of is the satisfaction. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe what what it may the the other things that makes you think like you said you're, you it makes what, you remember the again. movies that you like right maybe it, that's the satisfaction you get I guess out of that's this. what I was th- thinking when you, you mentioned Rubber earlier and I'm like well yeah. that director is above the material or you know mm-hmm. this one is a guy who loves these Friday the Thirteenth movies right you know and he's trying to conjure up like the right. sense of fun that he had in watching these Friday the Thirteenth movies and I think maybe. I was clocking into the idea, you know, just listening to you guys, like, I think I was into the idea that it was a comedy or not serious, like earlier. Mm -hmm. I think so. And I think that kind of also helped out. So I don't know what it would be like to go into it like a hundred percent. Like, I guess you who have now listened to this episode, right. You know, going like, okay, look at it as a comedy and see how it plays to you. Right. You know, then, uh, which of course means Michaela will have to watch it. Again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I don't probably. Know. I enjoyed myself with it. Uh, I appreciated the experiment. It did make me think, like, oh, I wish they would have made a new Friday the Thirteenth movie like this because yeah. that would have been a dramatic departure. Actually, we were talking about something similar to this when we saw the beginning of Scream. Six. Six. Six was the last one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but remember, there was a moment there at the beginning of that oh, yeah. one where we're like, is this movie going to go? Because you see the ghost face the... in the cold open. Yeah. 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 Are we got... yeah. Well, you're yeah, right. Yeah. We almost got there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And that yeah. would have been a radical, it. you know, yeah. change to the. And I think this is very radical, but at the same time, you know, uh, leading you down the same formulaic path of all of these movies. Um, I enjoyed it. And so I guess I would recommend it. It's a tough one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yep. You guys are both going to watch it again. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm going to watch it. I'm just saying I would recommend the experience. Um, so there you yeah. go. Um, okay. Well, next week, apparently, we're watching uh, Backdraft. 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 Yeah. Our first Ron Howard movie on the Saturday Night Freak Show. But is Clint Howard coming to the Saturday Night Freak <laughs> Show? Somehow we're going to tie it into our thematic subject okay, okay. all yeah. right all right and there's a silence of the lambs connection so it's right. like maybe it's oh. even a horror movie in a way the okay. fire is uh, yeah okay i mean sure <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh thank you for listening uh we hope you'll join us next week and until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark <laughs>